So the topic of recycling has popped up in so many conversations that I've had with guests on this show. But today we're going to be talking practical. Yes, the practice of collecting and processing materials that would otherwise be thrown away. Welcome to another exciting episode. This is Mother Earth. My name is Success Caminus. After the break, we'll be meeting our guest. Don't go away. is mother earth just in case you are tuning in we're about to embark on an amazing journey to learn about the actual process of recycling to do that with me is my guest his name is mr taiwo adewole welcome sir thank you by the way mr taiwo is at taiwo rather is an environmental consultant and environmentalist in general we have a lot of environmentalists come on the show so i have to really um i try my best to make sure they know okay the difference this is not the same person you know who's an environmentalist but this is mr tyro welcome sir thank you very much <laughs> okay so there is um so much to talk about when it comes to recycling but let's exactly. start with this environment okay that's why i felt um this place is the right place to talk about this very um very very important topic because okay. um i've had conversations with um some of my guests mm -hmm. and they suggest oh we need to recycle there's very very high need um to recycle yeah. single use plastics and plastics in general mm -hmm. and so but then we've never really had the chance to talk about okay when you say recycling what are we going to do you know so i want us to start first of all with you okay. your experience and what has driven you into um recycling and okay. just what you do as an environmentalist okay thank you very much welcome to our facility this is our collection and sorting of okay. whereby we collect items such as plastic nylon aluminium Carton, just name it, all recyclable items I collected and bought it. And this is the ninth year that I've been running this business now. So you can imagine anytime you train, the rainy season is around, anytime you train in Lagos, any journey you go to, you see a lot of plastic floating, floating, mm -hmm. floating. But I can tell you, we have some people already that are millionaire from this. Those cat pushers you see that go around picking items, majority of them are millionaires. And you'll be wondering how. For instance, once they come to your house to pick your waste, you give them 200 naira or 100 naira to take away your waste. Once they take that waste from you, they go to a place whereby they sit down and they separate just like what we are doing here. And if you look at the item we are collecting, they are very clean and neat because they are coming directly from the household. They are not coming from the drainage. They are not coming from the roadside. So because we have enlightened people to separate from source. So once they're able to separate from soil, they're going to have a clean material, as you can see here. You can see there's no odor, there's no smell, because this is coming directly from the household. And this is where the main work is done, sorting. Even the bottles, you sort according to color. Then you remove the label, you remove the cover and sort. Then after doing that, we have a machine that compress them before sending them to find that factory where they are being converted to polyester fiber, in making different items and so on like that okay so this man is, is running with us he's taking us so fast so let me catch my breath and help us all catch our breath okay. <laughs> so i wanted to actually start talking about not just the recycling now which is okay. amazing which is wonderful exactly. but i want to talk about um, everything you do first you said you are an environmental consultant let's hear about that before moving into recycling proper. Okay, it all started right from my first degree was in geography and regional planning. Then by 2003, I had to go back to my master's. Master's in environmental resource management. Mm -hmm. And little after my master, I wrote a book called Waste Nomics. Mm -hmm. That's turning waste liability into asset because everybody believes waste are uh, liabilities. Mm -hmm. But we now tell people you can convert that liability into Too assets. Money. So just like when you are looking at economics, you are talking about the economy, demand and supply. So we also look at waste economics. The 
you need to balance it the assets and the liability aspect of waste so this is why i give you pr just in case you do not know um you've not heard of the book waste the book was written by mr taiwo adewale and it's called waste no i think nomi. i should get a copy do i get yeah. a copy When we talk of recycling, is an aspect of waste management. There are so many areas we have of cycling, we have composting, we have recycling. But the one that gives more attention is the plastic. And if you remember two or three years ago, the world was talking about beating plastic pollution. And a lot of industry today are even shifting from glass to plastic. A lot of packaging are coming in plastic. And when we even talk of plastic, it's not only the bottles alone, yeah. even those lilo, they are, they are regarded as plastic. You want to buy any item that you want okay. to buy your laptop you want they come in carton and nylon you put them in nylon the packaging and so on so but the issue is after taking out the item what happened to the packaging after consuming your water what happened to the bottle after consuming your soft drink what happened and every single bottle you pick you always see a sign recycle but just call the company i just want to think of the dry recycle because i saw a recycling sign so the majority of them are just trying to meet the standard oh, SON or NAVDAC said we must have a recycling sign, but did they actually do the recycling? So that's why you find it a lot of this in the drainage. But thank God now we have what we call the EPR, extended producer responsibility, whereby the producer too must take responsibility. Everything is not left for government alone. So of the course. producer too, we just produce, sell, and make profit and keep the environment by not telling the people the right place to drop off. So that's why we have what they call the drop off center where people can easily bring their bottle and exchange for gift item or even exchange for cash. Or what we also have what they call the, the take back, buy back scheme by the government and people buy back the item. Even the producer buy back, especially like the water sachet where by the bag. And like I told you, these are raw materials for industry. Are you talking of the shirts you are putting on? Are you talking of your mattress, your pillow? You know the woman we want, these are raw material used for them. So instead of going for virgin products, why not get this same foreign exchange of instead of importing raw material, you have them locally. So this has created a lot of employment, direct and indirect employment. You have people that pick them, bring so that's them. That's what in. I want. That's what I want to um do. Mr. Taiwo, I've noticed that you are someone who is a teacher. So once you start like this, you want to take us, okay, this is step by step by step. But that's not how we work here. Because <laughs> <laughs> so many people have not been following okay. you know so many people don't won't even know at all like they don't they've not they've never stopped to think oh where's my bottle going exactly. they just go oh, okay malam come and carry and go they don't really they don't no really care so let's 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 start by what you were telling me about how you get the plastics from okay. household so now how because okay say so let's take this environment for example yes. how do they know that this place exists and um which um, body is responsible for educating them to separate waste okay thank you very much for you to go into this business first and foremost you have to be registered by the government mm -hmm. and which is done through loma so loma give you a certificate to operate and they allocate local government to you so presently now we have about 57 local governments and scd in lagos State. so every local government we have what we call the community recycling center mm -hmm. so once i register with loma loma allocates the local government to you for instance this is a more of him, that okay recycle point they are in charge of our mode of him. we are to be responsible for educating the people okay. go from house to house door to door do sensitization do awareness and the government join you anytime you're going for sensitization the government come around to join you and do the sensitization and let people know this item are chain away this is what you can get back in return this is what is being used for and so on and a lot of people end their living from this. When when there is money involved, Nigerians will be willing. Of course. Exactly. And this is a gold mine. Like I've always exactly. said, this is a gold mine. Exactly. So now let's move on and talk about the process now. Now we have this plastic and I can see lovely people working on this exactly. plastic. What are they doing? Tell so me. like I told you, once this item is separated from household, mm. they are brought here in a clean form because it has been separated. It has not been mixed with other organic food. So when they are brought here, they still need to do another separation. They separate color by color. Then the clear bottle, they remove the cover. 
they will be labor. For those who want to have another raw material entirely, so they need to separate them. I was about to ask, why do you need to separate? Because I can see covers over there. Yeah, you need to separate because the cover is a different product entirely from the plastic itself. Um, so those are ads, they, they are called the HDPE compared to the PT, so they are different raw material entirely. So they have to and separate them. And they are also different from the um, the They are um, different lab, from the, the lab the, uh, and label. So, label. so they have to separate them separate. They go to different factory, different uses. Wow. For instance, like I said, the cover alone is used in making your plastic bucket, your plastic hanger, even the shoe you wear the soap is made from that. Why the bottle is safe is used in making polyester fiber for making mattress, pillow, carpet and so on. So you can see that different raw material. So that's why they have to take that time to separate and sort. Then the same thing with the aluminium, the nylon, the carton, they have to sort them different categories before it is being compressed and sent to the final manufacturer, the recycler, and now convert them Into to those items. Okay, so you've also mentioned something about um, separating the colored ones. Yes. What's the difference between that we have like the green bottle, mm -hmm. the brown bottle, and the clear bottle? And if you notice recently, Coca Cola changed their green bottle, the spray bottle to a clear bottle. Yes. Yeah, because the clear bottle has more value oh. than the others. So, like I told you, for you to make your polyester fiber, for you to be, you need more of the clear bottle. So that's why you can see company and I'm changing, listen to the recycler. That will be, I think we prefer more of the clear bottle. Clear bottle. So that's why I see spray changing from green to, to, to green. So, which means the manufacturer so also listen to the recycler. This is what we want in the market. This, this is, is what fantastic. We need in the I am, I am, I am excited. So, if you want to know, stop asking any questions anymore. Mr. Taiwo has responded. The reason spy bottle is no longer green, green is, is because the clear green bottle, bottle, the clear is bottle has more value more valuable than the green the, bottle. Exactly. I didn't know that and I know you did not know that either. So you see we are all learning. So you also mentioned something about compressing yes. the bottles. Why do we have to compress now the in time of logistics? For instance, I be able to compress three or four of these bags, you are going to have one bay. So instead of you just loading a truck with maybe 20 tons. By the time you compress, you can do more. So that means oh. you are saving space. So by oh. compressing, you are taking more. Instead of taking maybe 20 bags, by the time you compress, you'll be able to take 50 because it has been compressed. And in fact, even some, in some space. cases, in household, we tell them once they are separating, you can easily remove the cover, compress. So which means your bag can even take more. You just compress, cover it, and put it back. So the more you compress you have, the more you can have in your bag. So in terms of logistics, it is very, very wise to compress. So you can take more in the in the vehicle. So for logistic purpose, compressing makes it more easier for easy transportation. Okay, so we've been talking focusing on plastics. I want to tilt a little bit and okay. sp speak about aluminium. Okay. Um, like the um, for example, the Amstel mortar, the can drink. So I've I've learned um I've seen people yes. compress, compress them, them as well yes. or um try to squeeze, squeeze them, them. Exactly. after drinking. What's the purpose now, of that? For the aluminum can, in fact, it is the most expensive out of all the material. For the aluminum can, once it is being compressed, they are taken to factory where, by, where they cover them to what is called aluminum ingots. Okay. So from the aluminum ingots. The produce spoon, your door frame, your window frame, your ceiling, your pots is made from those aluminum. So those are the raw material used for making spoon, your aluminum doors, window, your your roofing sheet, your spoon you use in house, even the pots, the cooking pots you use are made from those aluminum cans. So those are another raw material for this industry. Those wraps and those metal iron, they are another raw materials for some industry. For instance, if you go to the market, you buy your black nylon bags, or those black nylon bags given to you by Loma for mm -hmm. packaging your waste, they are all produced from those metal sachets. So we have factory where we take them to, whereby they wash, they grind them, and produce those rule of black nylon bag. Yeah. So anytime you go to the market and they put those stuff for in black nylon bag, those black nylon bags are manufactured from those metal sachets, and these are done locally. 
So anytime you go to the market to buy the roll of lilon, so you are buying the pure tar lilon, which you trade with, you are going back to the market to buy them. Because that's the raw material for producing those black lilon bags you see out there. Amazing. Okay, now let's talk about um, the people. How do you get, how do you source for um, your employees, people that work with you? And um, can you give me a number of people, like from 10 to 20, like people that are employed by this job okay. in your facility? Okay, thank you very much. For the employment, we make sure we source from the community. Any community we go to, source employment for people within the community because it's not only cleaning the environment, we're also creating employment opportunity for people within the community. And we also need to consider the distance of where they live coming from. So one, we are creating employment. And for you to have a certain a single up like this, you employ nothing less than a minimum of 15 people. You have the people that ride the tricycle, the people that do the sorting, the uh, office admin, the people that operate the machine. So minimum of 15 people per up. So you can see the employment, the number. Then we also have indirect employment, people that bring to us. Mm. But we have people that go around or oh, pick, let me pick some few bottles and bring and them bring to... It. Meanwhile, oh, some of them have their even normal job. I can give you an example of somebody I know that is, he has his office job, but what he does is strategy where are the fast food around, where are the event centers around that they have parties every weekend. And you just go there. Meanwhile, the he's still doing the normal work. Mm -hmm. You just go to this event center or the restaurant or the fast food that wants to close every day. Please just keep your plastic for me or keep your hand for me. Meanwhile, the normal job is still there. So you can see that is an extra income. Now, yeah. by the time I take this plastic to that recycling center, I'll get something back in return. Mm -hmm. So you can see it also creates indirect employment. Despite the fact that you're still doing your normal work, you just try to develop your strategy, identify two or three event centers or fast food that at the end of the evening, once you leave your normal office, drive down there, pick the bottles from them, drop it and get something back in return. This is waste <laughs> economics. Mm, exactly. Waste, <laughs> waste economics. So um, even I, I'm, I've, I've been thinking, just this few minutes I've spent, we have, ah, success. Are you sure you're not going to this? Exactly. Because it's like, ah, because it's quick money. Exactly. This is Lagos, and we produce one, um, one of the highest um, plastic The total production way. is about 5 billion plastic per annum. That is what is coming from the major producer. Minimum of 5 billion bottles every year. And the collection, billion. out of this 5 billion, the collection is just 30%, which means we sell about 70% 70 70 in the so drainage of the road. If I say I want to join now, there is so space there's, for there's me. So there's space for everybody. And now, um, let's move on finally and talk about um, drafting not only um, not only in Lagos, because most of these things we've been speaking about is in Lagos, centered, Lagos, centered in Lagos. I understand that this is a hub exactly. and this is um, a place where waste is produced. Yeah. And aside that, Lagos is our commercial capital yeah, exactly. and we see people trooping in mm. here. So how do you think it is best to spread um, this development, both um, when it comes to the curriculum and it, and when it comes to face to face yes. um, education across the 36 states of the federation. Yeah, the this is FTC. where the national orientation comes in. National orientation is under the Federal Ministry of Information, and they are supposed to go around the whole country. In fact, every state they have the uh, what they call them the national orientation against NOA every state and this is supposed to be their work and apart from having that in the national policy on education environmental education is there so every state are supposed to implement the policy coming from the federal just like the way we have the national waste policy which every state has to adopt and implement so the same thing with education and environment so if you go to Ministry of Environment, I mean Ministry of Education today, they tell you we have environmental education as a curriculum, but it's not left for the states to know how to break it down. How do we teach it in our schools? How do we break it down in government school, even in private school? Remember, we have the private school. And so if we have some school. private school that focus more on environmental management and so on, and they even do more practical, let the students start planting trees in school. Because it's not just about teaching, but practical. People need to see it. You need to practice what you preach. So, but you need to, it now depend on the state, how passionate they are. But there's no state in Nigeria today that will tell me they are not passionate about the environment. Because when the disaster comes, when we talk of climate change now, it's worldwide. You won't tell me the air that is blowing in Lagos will not get to the neighboring state. Of no. It's because it's the same air we base in. Anytime it changes, the same. So, everybody, every state must take it. So, once the passion is there, 
and Lagos is always like a like a study center and we even have other states coming to Lagos on that study two or three days okay let's go to Lagos because they know anything that work in Lagos they definitely work not even only in Nigeria even other West African country they come to Lagos on that study and go back and I can remember two or three days ago I have they could stay with my friends. MD was in Lagos for two days. Oh, let me understudy where you, uh, they were even in Unilag. Let's say Unilag is in the recycling, so we can take the same thing back to that state. So there's a need for collaboration. Though, if you're not getting it right, let me go to Lagos or let me go to my neighboring. So there's a need for collaboration. But the national orientation, their main job is to make sure everybody is synthesized all over the country, not only in Lagos. But every state you go to, that's why you have them. So they need to always upgrade. Most of these international organizations, Nigeria are signatory to most of them. So that is why in Nigeria today, you have the UN office in Nigeria, you have the UNEP, you have the UNDP, UNESCO, they are all in Nigeria today because by signatory to all this. And when you talk of UNESCO, when it comes to education and so on, they are there. So combining education and environment are together. And I remember two or three months ago, we have some, some training from UNDP that were drafted here. To come and learn more about recycling because and this were uh, even sponsored by the japanese government to show that the Nigerian government has collaboration with a lot of international organizations out there amazing and so i feel that my mind has opened and i know that when this is implemented um now i'm going to share my own story moving around i've been to parks i've met environmentalists just as yourself i've seen NGOs and people that own organizations spread word about um, treating the environment as best as we can and living sustainably. And I feel that when this is implemented, people will now begin to learn why what, ha what is happening in our environment is happening. Somebody told me um, that certain trees are there and animals are in place to um, create a balance in life. Yeah. So I feel that um, it's going to really help um, even children that are coming up exactly. to grow, not with the mentality that we have, because it's only in Lagos you can see someone walking on the road and finish drinking Pepsi and throw the bottle anyhow. But I feel that if this is implemented, we can now grow to a point where we we have social responsibilities. Exactly. It's it's very important. Thank you so much, Mr. Taiwo, Thank for coming you. on the show. You are always amazing and you give us so many details. I learned so much. Like I said before, this man is a teacher and I love to be around him. Thank you so much. Thank you, you're welcome. Uh, and well, there's one last question I want to ask about um, the business in general, your business. Do you have any plans of diversifying or expanding? And what, what other um, aspect of waste and environmental management do you want to um, expand to? Yeah, of course. When we talk of expansion, like you said, we want to be in every state in Nigeria. I mm. also want to move it further to do even what the off-takers are doing. Like I told you, the Indian, the Chinese, we're also looking at processing it, whereby you come to see us as they are sorting is going into the machine and what's coming out is a t-shirt or a mattress or pillow which is what every businessman wants to do so instead of sending them out or letting the foreigner take charge we can be in control and we want a session by every single state to go to you see we our facility that. closer to people every local government every household oh they talk about it in fact when they see bottle on the floor the next thing is oh there's a drop-off center just to walk away in every state in nigeria amazing and that mean that will mean more money for us because we're not giving the foreigners, foreigners that just come anything. here do it and take the money to their country which is sad which is exactly. sad i um i know that as as the movement grows we will move we will exactly. get to that point exactly. definitely thank you so much once again yeah, and this yeah. is where we draw the cutting if you haven't learned anything then you your earpiece or your phone or television where you're watching has volume issues because this man has talked and said everything from how it is beneficial to um the importance and why it is vital to instill this um values of environmental awareness in our children and that is that's why i will remind you that Train a child in the way he or she should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So for a cleaner Nigeria, for a cleaner Lagos, I feel.
environmental education is more than important. Uh, make sure to follow Iban TV on all social media platforms to get more um, informative and entertaining programs like this. Uh, we are on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe until we come your way next time. My name is Success Communist. Make sure to do your part. Mother Earth is watching. Thank you.